I'm the chief internet evangelist. Han har fått medalje av presidenten, har fått en plass blant oppfinnernes Hall of Fame, og er på et frimerke i den sentralafrikanske republikken. Windsurf blir sett på som en av internettets fedre, og i høst så var han i Norge der han blant annet holdt foredrag på universitetet i Trondheim. Vi fikk et eksklusivt intervju med mannen som i dag jobber for Google. Your title is uh, chief internet evangelist, isn't it? That would be me. Yeah, what's your message? Well, my message is that the internet is in everyone's future and there isn't enough of it yet. We only have 1.2 billion users. There's 5.5 billion more to go. Why is this good for us? Because we want everyone to be able to share information all around the world. The more information we share, the more powerful we become uh, as a society because we have knowledge that everyone knows about. Det er ikke rart at Windsurf blir mottatt som en helt hos Google i Trondheim. Sammen med kollegaen Robert Kahn lager han i 1973 et system for det amerikanske forsvaret. Det gjorde det mulig for de forskjellige datanettverka å snakke sammen. Altså kommunikasjon mellom nettverk, på engelsk internetwork eller internet. When, when you invented this uh, back in the 70s, have you ha did you have any idea that it was going to be as big uh, as it is today? Well, there's a long answer and a short answer. The short answer is no. Uh, the, the slightly longer answer is that a lot of what we do now on the internet, we were doing in small scale, even back in the 1970s. So we could see the power of the technology that we were developing, even if we couldn't predict what would happen when one billion people get online and start trading information back and forth. How does it feel today when you see uh, the internet and know that your system is the backbone of all this? Well, it's cool for, for one <laughs> yeah. thing, but what's really important for you and your viewers to understand is that uh, this is not the work of one or two or three people. Uh, the basic ideas started that way, but the only way you have such a big uh, success is for millions of people to decide they want this to happen, they're willing to devote time and energy and money to making it happen, to inventing new applications. And so this is much more the product of millions of people uh, contributing to the system and making it grow. Some, some people see the internet not, not only as a blessing, but also as a sort of uh, curse with uh, all the available information there. Well, what would you say to those sure, people? Lots of people will put bad information on the network. Well, this is a challenge for you and me. We have to learn how to distinguish good information from bad information. This is called critical thinking. What better lesson could we teach our children than to think critically about all the information they hear from you, me, their friends, the television, the radio, newspapers. If you think critically about what you're seeing and hearing, you'll be a lot better off. And now the first generations who have never known a, a world without the internet are growing up. How do you think that will, this will affect the you, coming generations? You know, it's a really interesting question. I have a certain amount of envy, right? You know, I, I meet eight-year-olds that are building their own web pages and blogging and I'm sitting here thinking, I had to be 28 before I got to use the internet, and I had to invent it first <laughs> along with my friends. So, um, so it's not fair. Uh, I think that what is happening is that most of the kids today just take the internet for granted. It's just there. It's like air. Juggling capabilities. <laughs> oh. What? Ah. <laughs> om windsurf begynner å dra på åra, er han fremdeles ungdommelig og har mange tanker om nettets framtid. Ah, oh well. You have lots of appliances around the house and in the office and in the car and that you carry around with you. All of those will be internet enabled. So the television set and the entertainment equipment and the refrigerator and the stove and the ventilation and air conditioning system and the automobiles, uh, GPS receiver and navigation display. Why would the stove be on the internet? The stove might be on the net for several reasons. First of all, you want to make sure that it's turned off when you go out of the house. Yeah. And if you're <laughs> not that. sure, you can check to make sure that you turned it off. You might want to turn it on before you get back to the house because the dinner is waiting in the oven and you want it to automatically turn on when it's time to go. The first thing that pops into mind was about hackers that hacks your house and turns your stove up yes, to you don't You don't maximum. want the 15-year-old next door to reprogram your house for you. So what we see in the future of Internet is much stronger authentication so we know that only authorized people are interacting with the devices that you care the most about. That authentication, strong authentication, is going to be uh, a sort of a central feature of the future internet activities because so many of the transactions that take place do require strong uh, authorization.
På foredraget kunne Vint fortelle at det ikke bare vil bli fordeler med å ha husholdningsapparatene på nett. Jeg har vært fortelling folk om denne internet-enabled refrigerator, og det vet hva det har i seg, fordi det har RFID-detektorer og ting som det. Det problemet er at våre japanske venner har spoilt det hele bildet. De har inventet en internet-enabled bathroom-skale. You step on the scale and it figures out which family member you are and then it transmits that information, your weight, to the doctor to become part of your medical record. This is all just fine except for one thing. The refrigerator is on the same network. It gets the same information and it figures out that maybe you should be taking diet recipes now or maybe it just refuses to open up. <laughs> so are you looking forward to this or do you think it's a bad thing? Oh, I think this is a terrible idea. I mean, nobody wants to have their lives controlled by their refrigerators, do they? <laughs>